I'm very fortunate I've been able to get out on the bike and make use of some of these beautiful country lanes that we have around here. Some of the weather's been good and some of the weather's been bad, but it is what it is. You make the best of what you've got. So guys, this is my Pinarello Prince road bike. This is the bike that I've used for train for and to take part in to the taps, which are stages of the Tour de France. I purchased this in 2010, but I believe this was actually the 2008 stroke 2009 competition bike that was used by some of the teams for the actual Tour de France. It's a beautifully designed bike, very stiff rear triangle, which is very important for a competition road bike. And one of the defining artifacts of the Pellerino Prince and of this range of bikes is the actual Pinarello bespoke handlebar set, which are called Talons. You'll see here, Cass has decided to take a, an entrance into the video. They have to be designed very comfortable for a lot of climbing because your hands are positioned a lot on the flats of the handlebars, which is this section on the handlebars. And they're called Talons because they replicate the talons of a bird of prey. And this T-bar, which sticks out the top of the handlebars, is specifically designed and provided for a bike computer which is invaluable when you're training for hard competitive cycling events. comes up through Broadtown which is at the bottom of this climb to Broadtown Hill and up along to Hackpen Hill where there's another white horse and then through and along to Marlborough. It's one of the training rides from, from Hill Martin through to Marlborough that I used to do some years ago. Um, I used to do this training ride as part of the attack training. The attack is the stage of the Tour de France, the climbing stage of the Tour de France that you can take part in every year. You have to register for it and obviously you have to be very fit to be able to do that. This, this climb that myself and my training buddies we used to train on. We used to do 10 iterations of this hill minimum, just coming climbing up to the top of the hill, going back down again, coming back up, no recovery. The recovery was the, the ride back down again. To be able to climb this now just once is a killer. I have climbed it recently 10 times, um, but nowhere near as efficiently as I used to because I'm now a lot heavier than I was 10 years ago. It's, it's amazing what 10 years will do even though you keep fit. So Jacob and I are out on this, on this training ride at the moment. And uh, we come up to here, this is, this is a beautiful view here. If you look around and pan around, you can see, you can't see much of the actual hill, but if you look around, you can see the fields. And up there, and it's quite a great area. This is a very pleasant area, and very good for training with uh, Broad Town Hill. A um, bit of a killer. I started back on the cycling again with Jacob during the lockdown period. Very good type of exercise to get back into during the lockdown period because you can be away from other people and keep your distance and obviously get your exercise back in again. Um, so it's, while the gyms are closed etc it's a very good form of exercise. So the last time I used this bike was in 2010, so say 10 years ago, it's quite some time ago. Um, so I had to break it out of the mothballs and get it ready to, to um, get it ready to go out and do some training rides on it again. Now before you take a bike out obviously you've got to make sure that you check the bike and make sure that it's fit for purpose before you ride out each time and when you put a bike away you should always do things like check the tyres to see if there's any foreign objects in there. So you spin the tyre forwards and you just run your hand across it to see if there's anything spiky, anything sticking out that is likely to puncture the tyre and you do the same thing for the rear wheel as well and you check your brakes also as well and basically just put your brake blocks on this using the bike for a lot of competitive stuff and I hadn't changed the brake blocks but that's something that, be, um, that can help a lot as well especially when you're going down fast climbs like this it's, uh, you can pick up quite a speed you can hit 40 45 miles an hour and if you try to hit the brakes and you've got nothing there then it's a big concern the other thing you have to be really careful of as well I'm um, doing these rides out even though this is a B road into Marlborough 
as you can see from the cars that are going past it's still quite busy you're climbing up this hill hitting seven, circa 17 80 percent at certain stages obviously you're going pretty slow and then cars are belting around you and of course they're trying to get past you on narrow roads where there's pretty much blind corners and they just squeeze past you you know it's very dangerous and of course if you're climbing a hard part of it towards the top of that hill it hits about 17 percent again because it hits 70 percent a few stages and you're out of the saddle you're just you know, obviously you're really tired trying to get to the top of the hill and that's always when you get a car right up your backside and they are so impatient so what i do is i, I move out nearest ambient to the middle of the road so they've got no chance um, but you know they can't go past me therefore they can't do a dangerous maneuver and yeah it might annoy them but at the end of the day it stops them from doing something really stupid that puts me in jeopardy and them in jeopardy as well because if there's a car coming the other way they hit the other car head on you know potentially three people are going to die in it so you've got to be very careful and be very savvy when you're on a bike as well and um, you know make sure obviously you've got good road sense you're, you're very aware of cars behind you any other cyclist you're with and obviously what's in front of you as well which is vitally important so very very much important to have your bike sense and comfortable experience hopefully you can hear me okay it's very very windy up here it's another thing at the top of Roll Town Hill it's very open so of course it's nothing to shield the wind and when you get to the top of Hackpen Hill as well it's very very windy as well um, but very picturesque to look across here so guys thank you for watching the video if you like what you see and if you like the content of this channel then please subscribe and hit that notification bell to make sure you receive all future notifications of incoming new videos thank you for watching guys take care and see you in the next video